This is Soundwave Radio on andrewhogue.com. We're going to introduce another guest to uh, the program who is certainly looking forward to coming to Australia again for, I think, maybe the third time now, but their first appearance on Soundwave 2014 is none other than Nordic uh, black metal legends Satyricon. We do have drummer Frost on the line to uh, talk to us all about, uh, you know, what he's looking forward to most about uh, being a part of Soundwave as well as everything else that's happening in the world of Satyricon. G'day, Frost. How art thou? Oh, uh... We are doing fine here. Looking very much forward to get down to uh, to Australia again. It's been fantastic uh, the two times before, so we look very much forward to actually participate in in uh, the Soundwave Festival now and also play a couple of um, sideway shows as well. It's going to be really great. Now we look at the band's career. I mean, you know, you've you've certainly been uh, active as a band. Boy, well over 20 years now, would you believe? And it's kind of almost been a two-piece uh, affair for the last, I guess, 15, maybe even 18 years, of course, with yourself and uh, Satur. Now, the band did release their eighth studio record, uh, self-titled, in September. What has been the reaction towards that record? Because uh, a lot of people are saying that the band certainly have uh, strayed from their roots, I guess some would use as a cliche, uh, with the band's music really are adapting a, a very sort of rock approach, even going back to the Volcano record as well. Um, fill us in on just the... Does it feel like a natural progression for the sound of uh, Satyricon to be evolving this much in at least now 2014? Yes, it, it truly does. Uh, the kind of evolution that um, that has happened uh, between uh, the new album and, and uh, the previous was, uh, of course implying that we were taking a big step uh, forward, or at least that's how we perceive it ourselves. Uh, And that, you know, uh, it was a pretty radical change of direction, but we felt that uh, the band was uh, was, uh, ripe for a great change. Uh, And we felt that uh, it was due time that we brought some dynamics into the music, which also affected the... the musical expression and the sound picture a lot. Uh, I think that I could, you know, write a book about uh, the evolution that has been taking place uh, and about, you know, the process leading up to the album. But uh, but to cut it short, uh, we brought in elements that we felt that Satyricon really needed. We have never, you know, been sticking to one particular formula. Uh, we feel that you know if you have done an album and have if you have done it well, that album is made, and there is no reason to kind of linger on just doing the same things in in different versions or in different takes. You should move on and and I think it's also very important to grow with your music and to make every album a large learning process that will naturally you know bring you further somehow and thus it's usually a matter of, you know, either starting on something uh, that it may take several albums to fulfill. Like we see the three albums before the Styrton album, where albums where we worked a lot uh, with the structure and, you know, how to write songs in a more traditional fashion uh, with more evident verses and choruses and so on and you know to bring some clarity into the music yeah, at least structure wise and we also brought quite a bit more of um, you know that turbocharged rock and roll into our music that we like so much with uh, you know the early Bathory and Venom albums or Celtic Frost for that matter you could see that there's you know a red thread that runs through Volcano and now Diabolical and the Age of Nero but with the Age of Nero, we kind of fulfilled the project that we had started on with Volcano, and we felt that it was time for us to come up with a much bigger change uh, and to more or less deliberately change the, the the fundament for the band in a way. So, you know, the way the album was created and what we were basically, you know, trying to bring into the band was something very different than what we did on the on the previous albums, uh, for the first time we were trying to drum jam forth an entire album, uh, and for the first time we were, you know, really taking our music all the way down to some 
very quiet, calm, musical world, uh, which we haven't really explored earlier. But as soon as we started trying that out, we understood that this is definitely the right thing to do and really what Satyricon needed. And we feel that we truly grew as a band, we grew as uh, individual artists and we grew as persons with, with this album and, and with the process that was leading to it. You did touch on a, a great word that uh, is really important in a lot of bands' music and some bands tend to avoid it, but that's their own uh, choice, is dynamics. And as I mentioned, you can definitely hear the, the, the changes in, in the band sound. Or like I said, it has been moving forward since Volcano. Now, when we talk about a lot of uh, bands pre, uh, prior to, um, well, I guess the, the newer sort of generation bands that may have been influenced by the... Uh, earlier sort of styles of uh, Satyricon, uh, do you find that some of these other newer generation bands that uh, are more stuck in the traditional forms of black metal don't view the band as a black metal band anymore because of the change in, in direction? I mean, how do you define the, the, the word black metal these days when we know just how broad it has become in, in, in its musical form over the last decade, I guess? Well, black metal has to be uh, quite, um, what should I say, it, it, it's not really a very pet kind of uh, term that, uh, uh, that points to something that uh, is a living organism. And it it really needs to grow and get to live in order not to expand and, and die as a musical expression. And we feel that it has always been a major task for Satyricon uh, to to make that evolution happen and to spearhead the process in a way. Uh, and and to us, black metal is about you know um, it's in a way a metalized darkness. It is metal music and and it is. Um, uh, marked by the atmospheres of it and the inherent darkness more than, you know, just a uh, uh, technical definition of, you know, how the guitar sh- sound should be and how the vocals should be and so on and so forth. Uh, I think that metal music that is truly dark and which has that uh, edge of extreme metal uh, could rightfully be called black metal. Turicon has never been darker than what we are now, so I, I feel that you know if if we aren't black metal now, then it would be meaningless to say that earlier albums were black metal albums. We are still more in touch musically and spiritually with uh, that darkness than ever before and I think that uh, the music has uh, more of a menacing and dark feel to it than ever before but it is also you know progressive and more dynamic than ever before Uh, we have groovy elements and we have intense elements there are quiet and calm parts and uh, and there are lots of rather uh, unconventional elements and solutions. But that's also what you should expect in black metal because it's always been about innovation and about uh, challenge and to dare trying out uh, new solutions and and to experiment. Do you think it's become a bit? I mean, do you think it's become a bit? Venom and Bathory were really innovative in their in their old days, and so were Kelty Frost, for instance. And, yeah. and they created this. Do you think it's become a bit stagnant when you look at what other black metal bands are doing, sort of keeping the same approach and you know the makeup and all that sort of thing? And and musically, most of them are kind of almost following the same route as Slayer, where you generally know what you're going to get. And they're sticking to their sort of core values of what they write musically. Whereas, as I mentioned, like a band like Satyricon really have pushed the envelope. But it de- definitely shows that a lot of these bands that are in the scene with you guys aren't moving forward that much and progressing. And I, and, and that's where the argument kicks in where some just think that Satyricon have strayed from their roots or traditional roots. 
when, as you mentioned, it's all about expression and, and, and finding a, a new way. Do you think bands will hopefully appreciate a bit more of the band's uh, musical approach, uh, I guess, in, in, in years to come? Yes, and I, and I think that's something that is going to happen. I mean, we have always been accused of, uh, of not being loyal to our own roots or whatever. And, and that's how things are going to continue because metal people in general are rather conservative. That's, uh, that's what we see all the time. Uh, but we also know that uh, many people will enjoy us for daring to, to challenge any dogmas. Uh, and lots of the people that don't appreciate what we're doing at a certain time will at some point actually start doing so. Um, there are lots of people now saying that, you know, Rebel Extravaganza is a classic to them, and, and many of these people are, are those that are really traditionalists. But when that album was released, you know, we were <coughs> getting so much uh, criticism for being too unconventional and for, you know, bringing in elements that sound strange and uh, unfamiliar and all that. So I think that uh, in, in that respect, uh, time will be on our side. Now, which uh, band, we'll move on to Soundwave really, really quickly, uh, which bands are you looking forward to uh, playing alongside with at uh, your first appearance for Soundwave in 2014? Oh, I have to admit that uh, as for now, I, I just know some of the bands that uh, are going to be there, so I will have to check it out when we, when we get down there because uh, I've been terribly busy preparing satirical shows and uh, we've really had uh, quite a lot to do lately so we have been a little uh, immersed in our own world yeah but uh, on the other hand i think that will be for the benefit of our fans so okay well we can get you to say a couple of last words to the australian fans and uh choose one of your favorite tracks from the latest record satiricon frost yeah we we in Satyricon look strongly forward to come down to Australia again. We we enjoy the country, we enjoy the spirit of the people there, and it's going to be fantastic to see uh, our fans in Australia again because they have always been among the better uh, we've had in the entire world. So so, so that's truly great, and and with this new album, we feel that you know we have something that we really want to present to our fans and that makes it all the better. Uh, from the new album, I would like to pick the song The Infinity of Time and Space, which I feel encapsulates the spirit of the new Styrican album. It's a magical song to me. Awesome. Well, thanks again for your time, Frost, and I uh, look forward to having the band back in Australia for Soundwave 2014. Let's check out some Satyricon now here on Soundwave Radio on andrewhogue.com.